Hi everyone, today we are going to look at bearings for CSEC Mathematics. It is a con an application of what we have learned in trigonometry, such as sine rule, cosine rule, area of a triangle, sometimes trig ratios or even Pythagoras theorem. But for today's examples and lessons, we'll focus on applications of sine rule and cosine rule. So cardinal points shows the four main directions on, as shown in the diagram. We have north, south, west, and east. In some questions, we will be required to do a diagram in terms of if they tell you that a vehicle is traveling to, in the eastern direction or the southern direction, you need to know in the sketch of a diagram which direction that is. But for today's lesson, the most important direction that you need to remember is north. The north line is always pointing upwards. What is a bearing? So a bearing gives a direction in terms of an angle from one point to another or with reference to a particular point. So the bearing of point B from point A, that means what direction B is from point A. However, our direction in this case, to be very specific, we are not going to use north, south, west, and east. We are using degrees or bearings, which gives us a more accurate direction. So a bearing is a measure of the angle in a clockwise direction from the north line. So if I'm measuring that angle at the point A, this arrow, the blue arrow represents the north line. And if you go in a clockwise direction to get to the point B, if this angle is 115 degrees, then the bearing of the point B from point A would be 115 degrees. So again, a bearing is just the angle made with a north line in a clockwise direction. Now, if we are looking at the opposite, if we are at B and we need to be able to get the bearing of the point A, then the bearing in this case is a clockwise direction at the point B from the north line and the north line being drawn at the point B because we are considering ourselves to be located at B. If you want to get directions to get to A, the north line here at our position, we are taking the clockwise angle from the north line at the point B. So this bearing can be calculated. It's not given in this particular example, but it's very simple to calculate. So calculating the bearing of A from B, so this is a, our previous diagram. And just to recall that alternate angles are equal. Alternate angles form a Z shape. And that means once we have a Z shape in our diagram as highlighted with the red dotted line, that gives us alternate angles. So this line, this angle, 115 degrees, would be the same as this angle at the blue arrow since alternate angles are equal. So we are really calculating the size of this angle here represented by the orange arc. So to figure out the size of this entire angle, if you just look at this vertical line here on a straight line, angles add up to 180 degrees. So this shaded region in green would be 180 degrees. And then this part of it is 115 degrees since alternate angles are equal. So therefore, the bearing would be the 180 degrees added to the 115 degrees, which will give us 295 degrees. The bearing at the point B to the point A would be the size of this clockwise angle made with the north line, this part being 180 since angles on a straight line add up to 180. And this one is 115 since alternate angles are equal. So just adding them gives us our answer. I hope this is clear because we will need to apply this knowledge when doing bearings for other questions. So in general, a bearing is usually represented using three digits. So if we have an angle that is just 35 degrees, as a bearing, you need to write it using three digits. So we write the zero at the front. So 035 means just 35 degrees, but bearings must be represented or expressed using three digits. 
In most cases, questions involving bearings usually involve the sine rule and the cosine rule, as I mentioned before, and it can also involve other parts of trigs, such as um, Pythagoras theorem or, th or trig ratios. But just to recap, Pythagoras theorem and trig ratios are only used for right angle triangles. They cannot be used for non-right angle triangles. Okay, example one, we are going to look at a past paper question, Jan 2014, number 10, parts B. The diagram below shows the position of three points P, Q, and R on a horizontal plane, that just means a flat surface, where P, Q is equal to 120 kilometers, as shown on the diagram here from P to Q. Then we have P, R, equal 150 kilometers and QPR equal 23 degrees. All of that information given is represented on the diagram. The first part of the question wants us to calculate to one decimal place the distance QR. So as seen in the diagram, this is the distance that we want to find QR. We have a triangle in which we are given two sides and an angle and we need to find the third side. So just to recap from our previous lesson of sine rule and cosine rule, when to use which one? A cosine rule, the cosine rule involves the length of three sides and an angle, whereas the sine rule involves two sides and two angles. So in this case, counting the side that we want to find as well, our question involves three sides and the angle 23 degrees. Therefore, for this part of the question, we have to use the cosine rule. So applying the cosine rule to any question means that whatever side we have written on the left hand side of the formula is the same as this angle. So this would be the side P and angle P. And if we label in terms of the P, Q and R as in the side Q, R, remember that this is the side opposite the given angle. All right. So if this angle is 23 degrees, this is the angle this is the angle P, this is the, ang this is the side that represents, that corresponds to that angle. So this side on the left hand side of the equation must be opposite of this angle that we are using on the right hand side of the formula. And these would be the other two sides, the PR and PQ in any order. You can have PQ and then PR. It's just the other two sides. So applying the cosine rule to this question, we have PR squared from the diagram PR is 150 degrees, sorry, 150 kilometers. PQ is equal to 120 kilometers. All right, and this is just an error here in the typing of the question. This is supposed to be squared, 120 squared. Minus two by 150 by 120, cos of 23 degrees. And working this out, 150 squared, gives to 22,500, 120 squared will give us 14,400. Simplifying inside the brackets, two by 150 by 120 would give 36,000. And I'm leaving this as cos of 23 degrees. I'm looking out inside the brackets here to give this value 33,138.17. And I'm also adding these two values here to get the 36,900. And then last step would be to subtract, and this will give us 3,761.83. But this is not the final answer because you want the length of QR, and on the left hand side, I have QR squared, which means that QR will just be the square root of this value, which is 61.3 kilometers to one decimal place. And as the question specified at the top, calculate to one decimal place. That's how I knew how to round off. If the question did not specify, you can round off as you like. But once it's specified, you need to follow the instructions. Part B of this question would like us to calculate the area of the triangle PQR. And we learned our formula for area of a triangle in the last video tutorial, where we have area is equal to a half AB sine C, where AB are the two sides that are um, adjacent to the angle or touching the angle. So if this is my angle, 23 degrees, the two sides that I'm going to use would be the 120 and 150. So 
Substituting into our formula, we would have a half by 120 by 150 sine 23, which gives 3516.6 kilometers squared to one decimal place. Part 2, find the bearing of P, sorry, the bearing of P from Q is given as 252 degrees. Calculate the bearing of R from P. So, looking at our diagram, the bearing of R from P is shown by the red arc on the diagram below. The bearing can be found by calculating the size of this angle, and this is the red arc that we are referring to. So, the bearing of R from P means that if we are located at P, we want to get to R, we are using this angle, clockwise angle with the north line. So, we need to find the size of this angle indicated by the red arc. So, in doing this, we are using the information that is given in the question, that the bearing of P from Q is 252 degrees. So, at the point Q, the bearing of P from Q means that we are at the point Q. And this clockwise direction, represented by the blue arc, is that 252 degrees. That's the bearing from, of P from Q. So, given that this bearing is 252 degrees, then, if I use alternate angles represented by the blue dotted line, this part of the angle here would be 252 take away 180, which is equal to 72 degrees. The reason why we are working this out is because to find the size of this angle here represented by the red arc, we need to know that this part of it is unknown. Now, this part of it is a 23 degrees as indicated in the diagram. However, we need to calculate this, the size of this part of it. And if I use alternate angles, then that missing angle would be equal to this part of the angle. So that's what we are working out in step one. We are figuring out this part of the angle so that we can know this one. So again, from the question, it's given that this entire blue arc here represents the bearing of P from Q, which is 252 degrees. And a straight line gives us 180. So this half of it here is 180. So this little part would be the 252 degrees minus 180, which is 72. So if here is 72, then since alternate angles are equal, then this part of the arc the red arc would be 72 degrees as well. Therefore, the total bearing would be the 72 degrees plus the 23 degrees, which gives 95 degrees. And again, a bearing needs to be expressed using three digits. So I'm writing that as 0, 095 degrees. Example 2, another past paper question, June 2011, number 10, part B. The diagram below shows the route of an aeroplane flying from Port City, represented by the letter P, to Queenstown, represented by Q, and then to Riversdale, represented by R. The bearing of Q from P is 132 degrees, and the angle PQR is 56 degrees. So all that information there is represented on the diagram. We have the point P, the point Q, and the point R. Then the bearing of Q from P is 132. That is shown on the diagram as well. That means if we are at P to get to Q, our bearing would be 132 degrees. And the angle PQR is 56 degrees, also indicated in the diagram, as well as they give us some additional information on that diagram. The first part requires us to calculate the value of x as shown in the diagram. And this is fairly straightforward because we know that on a straight line, angles add up to 180 degrees. So our solution would be 180 degrees minus the sum of the other two angles, which is 56 plus 48. And we can put this directly into the calculator as shown. Brackets must be used for the 180 to subtract the sum. And that will give us 76 degrees. So x would be 76 degrees. Part 2. The distance from P to Q is 220 kilometers. The distance from Q to R is 360 kilometers. Calculate the distance RP. So using the cosine rule, well, let's just identify why we need to use the cosine rule for this particular question. So we are given two distances. We have PQ, it's not shown on the diagram, 
but that this that information is given in the question so from p to q is 220 and then from q to r is 360 so we know two sides of the triangle and we want to calculate the length of the third side and we know the angle that's opposite that side that we want to find out therefore we are using the cosine rule since it involves the length of three sides and one angle so using that cosine rule the sides that opposite the angle 56 degrees would be this side rp and that's going on the left hand side of the equation so we have rp squared equal pq squared plus qr squared minus two times pq and qr cos of that angle q or in other words rp squared equal the sum of the other two sides squared minus two times the other two sides multiplied by cos of the angle so just substituting our values given from the question above we have from port city to queenstown is 220 so that means pq is 220 so pq squared will be 220 squared then from q to r will be 360 kilometers so this would be qr squared would be 360 squared minus 2 by 220 by 360 cos of 56 and just simplifying our values so these first two terms will be simplified to give us 178,000 and what we have in the square brackets would be simplified to give 88,576.156 and then subtracting into the calculator we'll get this value 89,423.844 on this side we notice on the left hand side is rp squared not rp so to get the length of rp we need to find the square root of that value which gives us 299.04 which can also be just rounded off to 299 kilometers this question didn't specify how to round it off so we can round it off to 299 kilometers determine the bearing of r from p so I've put in some of the information from what we had from part two. So in part two, they had told us from Q to R would be 360. They also gave us a length from P to Q, but that's not relevant for this part of the question. And from our solution, we have PR being 299. So I just added that into the diagram. The bearing of R from P means that if you are located at P and you want to get to R, we are taking the bearing, which is a clockwise angle from the north line at P. So that's represented by the red arc here. All right, so to calculate that bearing, then the 1 to the 2 degrees from the diagram is not the entire red arc. That just represents the bearing of P to Q. So that's until this line here which means that we need to figure out this angle on the inside of the triangle at p so to figure out this angle which is angle r p q or just the inside of the triangle that part of the, uh, that angle at p we are going to use a sine rule to figure out this angle and then once we know this angle then the bearing would be 132 degrees add this angle all right so how do we know that we have to use a sine rule well we have two sides involved one two and then we have two angles involved 56 degrees and the one that we want to find however since we also know the length of the side pq i believe the cosine rule could also work for this one if we use the three sides of the triangle and we can also use the cosine rule to figure out this angle at p all right but for my solution i've chosen to use the sine rule So using the sine rule, remember that the corresponding sides are opposite to the angle. So P over sine P would be 360 over sine of this angle, I'm calling that P. And then Q over sine Q. So if this is angle Q, I'm referring to the 56 degrees here. We are looking at the triangle. So we are referring to the angles within the triangle. So the angle Q would be the 56 degrees. So Q over sine Q would be 299 over sine of 56 and cross multiplying will give us sine p by 299 equal 360 by sine 56 so 
making sine p the subject of the formula, we would have to divide by 299 on the right hand side. So that means sine p will give us 0 0.99817. Notice I'm not rounding off too much at this point because if we round off to one decimal place or two decimal places here, it could affect the accuracy of our answer, our final answer. So we are not rounding off too much yet. So making P the subject of the formula, we would have to take the inverse on the right hand side. So sine inverse of that value gives us 86.5 degrees to one decimal place. So in our final answer, we can round off to one decimal place or two decimal places as required from the question. But this question didn't specify, so I'm just rounding off to one decimal place. Therefore, the bearing of R from P, as I explained in the previous diagram, well, previous page that the bearing would be this 132 degrees plus this angle inside of the triangle at P and we have found that this angle on the inside at P is 86.5 degrees. So the bearing of R from P would be 132 plus that 86.5 which gives us 218.5 degrees. So I hope you have understood the two examples that we have discussed. Um, if you have any questions feel free to contact me. Remember that bearings is an application of what you have learned in tricks. It could involve um, sine rule, cosine rule, which is the case most of the times. And sometimes it can involve trig ratios and even Pythagoras as well. So it's important to understand how to use the sine rule and cosine rule very well before you apply your knowledge to bearings. And also to analyze a question carefully to figure out what exactly the question is uh, is requiring you to do or where exactly is the location of the bearing or the angle that you are required to calculate so you need to analyze the wording of the question so for example the bearing of um, b from e means that you are at e so from e to the point b the bearing would be the angle at e as you are from e all right so thank you for listening to my video tutorial and our we will continue next lecture. Please message me if you have any questions. Thank you.